Greetings geeks, Adam coming at you here with another Wizard Hall video. This time around, it's not a full video, it's a half video. Yes, it's the Wizard Magazine half a palooza. Why half a palooza? Well, this is a situation where as we've been focusing on expanding the archives, you know, we've almost got a full run of the magazine. We're just filling in the various, you know, variant covers and things like that. But the thing that was also coming inside those issues of Wizard Magazine were special coupons, right? Special half-issue comic offers exclusively brought to you by Wizard Magazine in collaboration with various publishers. It started with the max one half issue. Some people say one half, some people say half. I like to say half. Uh, and so it's one of those things where we've said, well, we got to fill in those gaps. We got to find out what was uh, being sent out to the readers. So let's get started here. This is one from 1996. So this is a collaboration with Top Cow and Marvel Comics, Witchblade and Silver Surfer. You can also see Ghost Rider there, or one of the Ghost Rider demons. Uh, so, and we got Wolverine. I mean, this is an interesting collaboration here with Mark Silvestri, kind of getting in contact with Marvel again. This is from 1996. It's going to be discussed, actually, in upcoming issues, because we are currently in the 1996 era of Wizard Magazine. Uh, on the other side of the image, uh, you know, founders, we have Divine Right. Okay, so this is a big crossover that Jim Lee was trying to do at Wildstorm. Now, what you might notice about this, though, is it says here that this is a wizard special edition. Got a little holographic seal there. So I believe in a previous video, I just showed off the regular Divine Right cover. This was the special edition. So yes, they had to make even their half issues that were already kind of special and collectible because you had to mail away for them even more exclusive. Again, I'm always wondering, like, how did those special half issues get out? Um, here's one, though. The 10th. Okay, so a little bit more image uh, here. We have Tony Daniel doing this cover here. So uh, what I also like about these is obviously they all came with their certificate of uh, authenticity there, but also on the back they would be actually be advertising the upcoming issue of Wizard, you know, that was coming out at the time that that was going to be mailed out, so I thought that was cool. Uh, again, getting into the world of Top Cow with Ascension. This is definitely not a book I remember from back in the day, uh, but definitely some, you know, very Top Cow style art, right? This isn't uh, Michael Turner, but he certainly is advertised on the back. There's actually an ad for Fathom. So, which would be at Top Cow for a while, and then not. Oh, Aspen Comics. Okay, here we go. Here's a get back to Marvel, though. A Hulk half issue. This one just always stood out to me. I believe this artist's name is Scott Lee or something like that, but just this intensity of this Hulk. It's got that classic look to it, a little bit cartoony, kind of kind of caught my eye there. Now this one definitely caught my eye because this is a Joe Quesada Iron Man cover, Invincible Iron Man, right? Uh, so this is actually something where Joe Quesada wrote this issue, but he didn't do the interior art on it. But of course, Joe Quesada, a big friend of Garib Sheamus and the Wizard family here. So I love looking at this electricity and all these things flipping around here because that's very Joe Quesada, right? That's that's starting with Ninjack with like the ribbon things, but then even more so with Ash. You know, it's just like, yeah, he's got some glowing gauntlets. We know where you live, Joe. <laughs> Okay, this is really interesting because Vampirella was another character, especially the Bad Girl era, featured heavily in Wizard Magazine. But uh, by the late 90s, they had revamped her with Kevin Lau. This is interesting. He actually has his signature right underneath the, you know, the title there and, and down here as well on the uh, other part of the cover there. So this is Vampirella imagined as kind of like a manga futuristic story. I'll be interested to cover this when the time comes. They tell you on the back, the future is now! HarrisComics.com, you know, the website. Uh, everybody had to have a website. That made you cool in the late 90s. Check this one out, though. A little Tomb Raider action from Top Cow. So there were actually quite a few Tomb Raider half issues that were released. Lara Croft, very popular with the fan base. But also, there were Tomb Raider Witchblade crossovers. I mean, there was all sorts of stuff going on. So found that interesting. Now here's another name that becomes very popular in Wizard eventually, Brian Michael Bendis with Powers, but if you look at this, this is a Wizard Special Edition, look at that gold, yeah, we got a gold logo there, so 
Powers, I remember being a very, very big deal. It was very heavily promoted in Wizard. People thought it was fantastic. And of course, Brian Michael Bendis then goes on to do not just create her own stuff, right? Wow. I mean, the, the career of that guy. Just talent speaks for itself, right? All right. Now, here's one, again, no idea about this. No idea about this early 2000s. Violent Messiahs. I'm going to say that's a pretty cool design. I mean, that definitely feels 2000s, doesn't it? But Violent Messiahs, not something I'm familiar with. And I think by, you know, the 2000s, they're kind of starting to run out of steam a little bit with the half issues, you know, here and there. They got to fill the gaps month to month because readers want it. You know, stuff like The Red Star, again, Image is, you know, trying to find the next big thing, so they're promoting, but I don't know if the Red Star was it. Kind of a cool look to it, though. It's got a, an interesting art style. Now, all those being said, you know, some familiar faces, some forgotten faces of the 90s in terms of characters and titles, but this one is known to all, especially recently, okay? We have the Star Wars Boba Fett half issue. Now, here's the deal with this. I don't usually like to brag about how much we pay for these issues or, you know, what we're, you know, the deals we're finding. But this is a book that normally sells for like, you know, 40 or, you know, a little bit more, uh, uh, you know, on the secondary market there. Of course, when it's slabbed, it's a hundred and some dollars. Uh, but this is, you know, a very popular one among Star Wars fans. But I got it for $5. Okay, actually, all of these were coming in. Somebody was, like, liquidating their half issues. And so I was just like, well, now's the time to stock up. Some of these titles I'm not going to find individually. Get some combined shipping. You know how it works. But getting that for $5 because it was just in the mix, right? And I will tell you this. This is what I think is the secret. You guys tell me if, if this is theory pans out. But I bought these the weekend of Comic-Con. I wasn't at Comic-Con, but a lot of people were. And I know a lot of other websites run Comic-Con deals. And I think everybody that would have bought that at some point, just in a, a, you know, an off day, just like, oh, I want to buy that. They probably had already spent all of their collectible money for the next couple months. They didn't have any more to spend. And so there wasn't going to be a bidding war on that issue. Because literally, like, a week later, it's another issue sold for 40 bucks. You know, same copy. So I think if you are not going to Comic-Con, but you want to get a special deal, that is when you need to shop online auctions. Just a tip, something that seems to work out, but if you think there's another theory, you let me know. But there we go. There are our Wizard Half Issues joining the archives. We want to thank you so much for checking out the channel. Are you subscribed yet? Are you leaving comments? Was there a particular title in there that you were a fan of that I didn't know anything about? Give me the heads up. We love to hear it. Of course, we want you to find us on social media at Wizards Comics, on Instagram at Wizards underscore comics. Stay tuned. Stay informed. We got a lot more 90s comics nostalgia heading your way. But in the meantime, keep your books bagged and boarded.